I'm Greg Stoller, and this is the Language of Business. Today, we'll discuss the Business Plan's Industry Competitive Analysis section. This is where you focus on what the industry trends are and whom you'll be competing against. The goal is to identify an unmet business opportunity. Use a funnel as an analogy. Begin at the mouth as the entire industry you'll be operating in, then gradually funnel down to the individual sectors making up that industry. It's in one of these sectors where you'll introduce your new business idea. How detailed should you be? Some experienced entrepreneurs know how to whet the reader's appetite and use the strategy of less is more through a series of bullet points. Others believe in making their case almost like a lawyer does in a courtroom, methodically step by step, impressing them with their industry knowledge. Let's find out the merits of both approaches. Our first guest is John Francis, a serial entrepreneur primarily focusing on high-tech companies. He strongly believes in the merits of thorough industry analysis. John, welcome to the Language of Business. Good to be here, Greg. Thank you very much for having me. So what startup are you currently involved with? Well, I'm doing two things right now. One of them is a pure startup uh, called Test My Pitch, and the other is quite the opposite end of the spectrum. Um, we're doing a lot of work with Red Hat. And what is the difference between the two? Well, it's very interesting. Obviously, one is a multi, you know, is a, a billion and a half dollar company this year. One is an, a pure startup. So in the pure startup's case, one of the challenges, right, is you really don't have an established market yet. You're still trying to ascertain who you're selling the product to. You have an idea, but you don't have a fixed market yet, and you don't have marketplace feedback. And what areas of technology do each of these two startups cover? Well, Test My Pitch is really a, cl a cloud-based validation of a presentation. So and a, by a presentation, do you mean a PPT? Do you mean something? Uh, it, it literally right. like we're doing. It would be, uh, you could literally present you, you know, uh, a, uh, your presentation. You could just stand up in front of your camera at your home or at your office and have your presentation validated or verified along a series of criteria. And the second one? Well, the second, as I say, is a, a less of a startup and really more of a, trying to appeal to some startups on behalf of a billion-plus-dollar company. But for the benefit of our viewers, what is Red Hat and sort of what technologies do they cover? Well, Red Hat is the industry leader in uh, commercializing open source software. Okay. So going back to the first one, yep. test my pitch. How do you assess the industry attractiveness of this type of technology? A good question because it's a, in a case like this where there isn't a direct competitor, uh, what there really are is a series of other players that have things that overlap a little bit or that do some of what they're trying to do. So what we've tried to do is several things. One, we we are the audience, if you will. Everybody involved in the, the company management is... management team or... The management team and the advisors are all people who have been entrepreneurs and or have been involved in would-be prospective users of the service. Uh, two, we went to some uh, gatherings of people that would be the target audience or representative of the target audience and we circulated a number of surveys to those people. Secondly, we also have built out an alpha stage version of the product sure. to try and validate what the product does and the user experience associated with it. But how much of this is going for marketing and how much of this is going to test the industry's attractiveness? Well, I think a lot of it is to figure out, you know, we've gained uh, a sense uh, from the, the early surveys that we've done that there is an opportunity that it does solve a problem that people perceive as a problem. Sure. Uh, the next piece was to say, is somebody doing this already? Are they doing it in a, in a very direct and elegant way? The answer to that question appears to be no. So then the, the next step is, well, how do we then address that problem? So the corollary to that is, tell us about the competitive situation. Nice lead into that, right? So the Thank competitive you. situation is uh, uh, when you're dealing with, in some ways, it's much easier to go into a situation where you have an established competitor. Right. If you're coming in with a new soft drink and you're competing with Coke or Pepsi, you know how they position themselves and you know what their value proposition is. When you're coming in in a case like this where the market is very fragmented and there are no direct competitors, you have to look at a sector approach. So that's what we've tried to do. Look at the sector, look at the users and what they perceive as valuable, and then look at other people that use similar technologies for different purposes, thinking that they might be able to pivot and, and be competitors over time. So you use the term value proposition. In 30 seconds or so, what do you think is the value proposition of Test My Pitch? I think the great thing about it is 
people use, uh, are doing presentations in school, they're doing presentations in internal to their own businesses and external as well. They have different criteria for what they may be seeking to do. They may be trying to be very professorial or they may try uh, to be very authoritative. Whatever it may happen to be, there are different objectives that they have. Being able to uh, set up a set of criteria and have people evaluate how good of a job you do along those criteria is quite useful to people. You're watching The Language of Business. I'm Greg Stoller, and my guest is John Francis, a serial entrepreneur. You mentioned you're a strong believer in thoroughly written industry competitive analyses. Why is this the case? Well, I think, you know, I'm less worried about writing a report per se, and what I'm more worried about is actually going through the rigor of thinking, has someone already done this? Have they done it well? Have they made, done a, a poor job and we can do a better job? I, I don't want to get involved in a startup where what we're going to do is reinvent something that someone's already done an excellent job of inventing. Uh, so I think it's very important to have the discipline to go through, to do the research, figure out how other people are attacking these problems. But let me interrupt you and, and posit this. Yeah. Are you trying to reinvent the wheel, which is sort of traditional tech that you're doing something nobody's done before, or are you simply trying to capitalize on inefficiency in the market? Well, I think in this case, it's, it's uh, really, uh, it, uh, you could call it an inefficiency in that there isn't really a product that does what we're trying to do, so call that an inefficiency, if you will, or a gap. Uh, and we're trying to address that. And we're trying to address it as elegantly as we can, so that requires looking at a variety of things. So where is the line, since this segment is on industry competitiveness, yeah. where is the line between we think the customer needs it, we yeah. think there's a gap in the market, yeah. but we think the industry is large enough that we can actually have our own little slice of the pie? In other words, is it a product or is it a feature? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> That's another way of saying it, sure. So, uh, a good question. So I think that y you do have to recognize that you know, certain things may be very good businesses, but that doesn't mean that they'll displace Google or they'll displace right. Microsoft. It can still be a good business, but still not be an enormous scale business. I think in, the case, uh, in, in this case, it appears interesting. It appears as we've looked at it, we think there are a lot of ways to slice it and a lot of very granular ways to present it. So the opportunity is bigger than I'm presenting at this point. And how will you ultimately establish your or evaluate your success? Is it going to be a number of users? Is it going to be on displacing not the Googles of the <laughs> world, but you know, a another nascent startup? Help us and, and our viewers to understand that, please. Well, I think since uh, it appears to be the sort of thing that doesn't require an enormous amount of funding, uh, you can ratchet down what your criteria for success are, right? If you need to get $20 million in funding, then obviously your criteria are much higher. In this case, we think we can roll this out for reasonably short money given that that's the case, the criteria come down quite a bit. So as a segue to that, what's more important, the industry's trends or the competitors' moves? Flip side to both issues, right? right. So I think that to the extent that the technology uh, evolves very quickly and it enables certain things to, to, to become uh, viable alternative products, you do have to be very cognizant of that backdrop, of that technology chain, in our case, the technology. Um, but you can't ignore the, the direct competitors. So I think that they're both uh, corollary components of the same issue. So if you had to look at this holistically, what do you think is the most or are the most important parts of the industry and the competitive analysis? I think understanding which problem you're really solving is, you know, it sounds very basic, but it's easy to overlook. It's easy to get enamored with the underlying technology. At the un end of the day, most most consumers could care less about the technology. So you have to understand who it is that you're trying to sell something to and what, uh, you know, what value those people derive from it. The technology is a little bit beside the point. That said, you do have to understand how quickly technology changes and how what you're delivering will evolve as a byproduct of that. So you use the phrase, figure out the problem you're trying to solve. Yeah. Uh, in a few seconds, what is the problem you're trying to solve? I think the problem we're trying to solve is that th People do presentations all the time, and frequently they don't do them very well. We're trying to make people uh, have a forum to improve their presentation skills uh, in a low-risk, low-impact way. Great. Thank you very much. But what happens if you know an industry so well that it's easier to explain the opportunity through a series of bullet points? Do some customers respond better to less is more? We'll find out next on The Language of Business.